One of the major misunderstandings of those who have never read Vasconcellos' work is the idea that he supported the mixing of the Spanish and Nicolaca races, or Indian races. Quite the contrary. Vasconcellos did support the idea of race mixing, but he supported the mixing of similar races and questioned the results of mixing those with diverse backgrounds. For example, Vasconcellos wrote that the reason the United States was so powerful was because it was a predominantly homogenous country of northern European races that mixed together, the English, the Germans, Scottish. And uh, this is what he sees as the key to success. He also looked with favor upon Argentina, where the predominant European population was also a mixture, but of southern Europeans, Italians, etc. French? Uh, Vasconcellos felt that the mixing of different races, like those of the Nicotlaca and the European, had dubious results. He also believed that events like the Mexican Revolution had prematurely interrupted the ideal mixing process with such decisions as ending large-scale Spanish immigration. Following the so-called Mexican independence, the Spaniards who controlled Mexico encouraged the immigration of Europeans in large numbers in an attempt to offset the large Nicotlaca populations. And this leads to another aspect of Vasconcellos' white supremacist ideology in his writings. Vasconcellos was a Spaniard born in Oaxaca. He eventually left and went to school in the north, and I believe he also attended school in Texas. As an adult, he revisited the town he was born in and was disturbed by the fact that so many of the people living there were of Nicanlaca descent. He wrote, quote, I noticed how small the white population was and how many Indians from the surrounding highlands were invading the streets, wrapped in their blankets, silent and impassive. And I understood the whole tragic process of the history of Mexico. It lies in the exhaustion of the conquering and civilizing blood. Vasconcellos felt that the worst thing the nation of Mexico did was to declare independence from Spain. That the Spaniards living in Mexico had literally dug their own graves. He realized that the European population of Mexico was actually quite small, and that in several generations, the odds were good that the white race could disappear completely from these lands. He went so far as to even doubt the ideas of those like the Cientificos who sought to bring in more European immigrants to bolster the white population as an effort being too little, too late. In his book, Vasconcellos went on to lament that, quote, the mestizo is the predominating element in Mexico, end quote. So if the Spaniards could not be the predominating race in Mexico, the next best option in his view was to incorporate the mestizo and the Indian into Spanish culture. Vasconcellos went on to argue that, it, quote, if we Europeans do not wish to be overwhelmed, we shall have to see that they are raised to the higher standards of life where reproduction becomes regulated and quality predominates over numbers, end quote. In La Raza Cosmica, Vasconcellos makes no effort to conceal his belief at the very basis of his new race requires the realization that people must either, quote, marry up or disappear completely. Vasconcellos hopes that eventually the old interbreeding system, the one where, quote, white colonists took an Indian or black woman because there were no others at hand, end quote, will be replaced by a systematic one in which only the best will breed. And what will happen to the Nikitlaka during this process? According to Vasconcellos, the Indian can, quote, graft himself onto the Spanish race and make the jump of millions of years that separate Atlantis from our times and, of course, ultimately disappear. Such a scenario would prevent the overpowering of the superior few by the uncivilized many." End quote. As we can see, the foundation of Vasconcellos' so-called Rasa Cosmica is based on major white supremacist views. If one were to actually take the time to read his books, and other speeches and lectures, it is quite obvious that his, this false notion that he somehow supported the mixing of Spanish and Indian races completely falls apart. Vasconcellos had nothing but contempt for us as an indigenous people, and like those who ran the so-called Indian schools here in North America, the philosophy is pretty much the same. The only way to save the people is to kill the Indian within them. And then lastly, I just want to mention once again that this is an attack on the people that used this term in the 60s and the 70s. Um, in my opinion, one of the major strengths of the Machica movement is its willingness to keep moving forward. So if you look at this, this is the first edition of the, of the handbook 
published in 1995. It's about 15 years old. And if you look at this in the materials that are in here, you'll see a great progression for the new stuff that's published and the new materials on the website. It wasn't something that was stagnant. It kept moving and it keeps adjusting and evolving to confront the problems of today. And unfortunately, many of the organizations and ideologies of the civil rights movement of the 1960s are stuck there. You can see that sometimes when you go to protest today, and some of the old slogans from that era are used to combat issues of today. When groups like the Minutemen and SOS were attacking our people and they went, and they were met with shouts of, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us, or a people united will never be defeated. You could see a collective yawn on an attitude of, yeah, heard that one before. But when the Mexica movement brought out signs screaming that Europeans are the illegals since 1492 and no European borders on our continent, that really caught their attention. If it, yeah, let's see. It even caught the attention of Fox News, Glenn Beck, and Michelle Malkin. But that's because the movement came at them with an evolved message. Do you think a fist in the air and someone saying, all power to the people would have made the news today? Not likely. And that's not how, and that's how we should view the term rasa. It may have been the best option or term for that period, but belongs in the past. Once you read and understand the philosophy behind the phrase, I don't see how any self-respecting Mexican who embraces their Nicolaca past could ever use the word to describe themselves or others unless they truly believe that the Spanish language and culture is superior. And some people may say, well, when I use that word, it's not in that context. That's not what I mean. You know, and that may be, but uh, its source is from a white supremacist, and that's the origin is what it is. It's like using the N-word. Some people may use the N-word, and they might say, well, I don't mean it the way the racists mean it. You know, it's different. If I were African American, I would never use that word towards another African American. And uh, likewise, I would never use the word rasa in reference to another person of Nikit Laka descent. Thank you.